Again with a small cock, I mean small screen. Yeah, so I uh, learn something new all the time, eh? I never knew that the CPC could actually uh, change the size of the borders, because that's exactly what's going on here. There's no way this bit would be like, you know, bitmap screen and that would be border and they could get the rasters to perfectly line up. They couldn't even do that on the C64, that would be incredibly hard. Well, actually, it's technically impossible. You might just be able to uh, almost do it on something like an Amiga 1200 in low resolution mode with fast RAM. That's sort of like 1993-94 spec or home computer, that is. So it's nice loading screen. And... Uh, I hope it's not a fucking multi-load, but I don't think it is. I don't think there's enough uh, tape data going on. So, we shall resume when it's loaded. Just uh, so people know, I'm oh, fucking... Hey, there we go. Uh, I've not always been a cat's only person. I did have two dogs once. But, uh, unfortunately, that was when I used to drive 100 miles a day to work five days a week. And uh, my girlfriend at the time that we got the puppies with turned out to be a fucking idiot. But uh, that's Sasha, the one with the white stripe, and the other one's Pepper. Uh, they're both uh, Border Collie uh, Cross with uh, Labrador. Uh, but Pepper was like, you know, 75% black Labrador. And uh, Sasha was like 75% uh, Border Collie. And Sasha was female and Pepper was male. And uh, just like poor Amiga, stroke Amy, uh, they, they got quite ill because uh, unfortunately I bought them from uh, scum class people. Um, and uh, they had something called Parvo. And one of them was in intensive care for two days. It cost me like 450 quid at the vets. I didn't mind, but I was pretty broke at the time. <laughs> it was one of those uh, years where um, hmm, you get your wages and then you'd have to juggle whether you got enough money to buy food or petrol to drive to work and Darth Vader is a cunt just like my old manager do 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 oh no he's still loading shit oh crap it didn't even say like uh that's alright, we won't get past this bit, will we? Although the scrolling is a bit slower than the C64, so we might have a chance. Do, 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 Again, they're using like some dodgy NES green colour when it should be sort of like uh, orange, brown, whatever. Because there are oranges and browns on the screen. I don't get that. Why are they using this shit colour? No man likes puke green or juice door. Yeah, we've done the juice door from the original. Ow! If it tells me to rewind the tape, that's the end of the re review. Just so you know. Uh, okay. okay, so the uh, virtual sprite clipping is going well. Hey, you two, don't fight. Come on. I'm in the forest of Endor, stop it. Oh man! I'm blaming Penny for that one. Penny, leave him alone! Go away! Oh, actually, it's Coco. Why don't you like him, you little bitch? Coco and uh, Adamski do not get on anymore. I don't know why. I mean, they won't fight to the death like, uh, you know, Aslan. I don't know what's going on there. Oh man, so you've got bump new it's it's like a rubbish version of bumping buggies in isometric and the only positive bit of that thing there is isometric. They won't fucking go behind me, innit, bastards. Why can't I go right to the bottom of the screen? You bastard. There you go, fuck you. I was actually getting to some parts of the scenery that were a bit different. Oh, 
Oh man, the controls are so iffy and the uh, zip stick is a bit iffy as well. You can buy that. It's a great excuse for my shit gameplay. Great. Hey! I pushed him on the side there. Hey, what? Why do they fucking uh, kill me? Oh, you've got to use a joystick, right? Even though there's a keyboard right there, I've got to use a joystick. Obviously! And that was fucking easy. Like I said, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a multi-load on games like this, because uh, we're not going to get past level one anyway. What the difference does it make? So, for the CPC, the scrolling is okay, but you move in large jumps. It's a bit like a character-based movement. Uh, and that does affect the playability, if you ask me. But it's not a very playable game anyway, it's a shit game on the C64. Can't play it without cheats. Ah, no, no, no. See, when you, when you kind of like have to dodge them and shit, it's, it's very tricky. Hey! I didn't even touch anything. He shot me and... Ah, oh, fuck off. There you go, piss off me. So it's kind of like Spy Hunter, bumping buggies, in isometric with uh, rubbish character based iffy movements. There you go, mate. What's going on there? Ah, oh, fuck off. God damn motherfucker. Hey! Yeah, you go through there, mate. There you go. It's, uh, that's nice for you, isn't it? Oi! Hey, no! No, that ain't right. Fuck you, that shit collision detection. I didn't touch the fucking tree. So you're getting a full GERT screen there, so that's the uh, loading screen, which is absolutely fine. It's mode zero, which is correct, and uh, it's pretty similar to the C64 one. So This is going to be a multi-load though, so uh, yeah, anyway, wish me luck. Uh, right, so... Uh, I'm zoom that out a bit. So it says uh, rewind side to and um, press play, blah blah blah. So luckily this this is quite an easy multi-load. Although in reality this is bad because you only get one side of the tape to try and load the main program. You, you don't get two copies of the game. But it's better for me. So uh, let's uh, see what happens now. Right, so we have to press play now. I'm ready with a fucking pause button in it. You chicken box prick! Yes, I uh, seem to uh, like that phrase. Now, I've, I've heard that phrase like a decade ago, but I didn't really notice it, I suppose. Andrew Benson, famously, uh, who plays Ashley in uh, uh, Phone Shop, uh, he is actually in uh, the 2017 uh, Tom Cruise movie, The Mummy. He's also in the IT crowd. Never mind about that. Let's play this now. Yeah, not quite as smooth as a C64 version, but I'm only worried about the playability really. But the engine noise is fine, actually, I must admit. It's yeah, sadly suits hang on or super hang on. Yeah, it is super hang on. Hey! On the uh, Amstrad is a fucking shitty Spectrum port job, so. Now I might watch Tron a bit later while I'm having my sausage packet. And that's not a euphemism, mate. I'm not like that. Oh, Amy likes these square tones. She really does. Now, <laughs> famously, famously on the C64 version, I can actually long play it on easy most of the time, actually. 
can't really remember playing this on my C64. I think Amiga's going to move the camera. Let's have the volume down a little bit. Yeah. Right, so uh, on with the next bit. So you have to babysit this tape, basically. Uh, now, you know, on games where, uh, you know, the multi-load and the main programs are on the same side, I could actually split them up into at least uh, two audio files and then that would be fine for unattended loading. That's basically what this is all about. Now there's nothing I can do about the uh, video quality when recording the uh, monitor uh, for the Amstrad because there's no contrast, brightness and colour controls, there's just one dial like some 1970s piece of shit TV and the camera doesn't like high contrast and high uh, colour saturation, it really doesn't you'll get flicker from at least one of those and I can't actually change that Yeah, your parents definitely would have told you to uh, put the volume down there. And I managed to put the volume down without taking my hand off the joystick. Wow, second gear is really slow. So, when you're going at full speed, the graphics look alright in the, you know, the roadside objects and that. It's only when you're going slower that you really notice that they're a bit jerk off, but anyway. So on easy, this is actually quite an easy game. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes come home from work from your shit job, lug in huge massive CRT TVs. Because your fucking Turkish boss is uh, built like fucking Christian Bale in that movie where he can't sleep with Jennifer Jason Leigh, I can't remember what it's called now. The Machinist, that's it. And, uh, you know, you just want to play some games. You don't actually want to be great at the games. You don't want people to go gaga over your gaming skills. You just want to veg out in front of your fucking uh, TV playing computer games. which I guess is uh, why I didn't play uh, Shadow of the Beast as much as I could and now the bastard won't load oh, shit, shit, I have to keep pausing it luckily it does do you the uh, service of saying press button to begin so. so even though this is a multi-load this is quite a usable multi-load uh, using this uh, ingenious method that I designed and uh, you know thought of all by myself of uh, you know tape images and uh, cassette adapter in the uh <laughs> yeah all right maybe I didn't do that I don't know how I managed to overtake him I've got no idea there's not enough frames of animation to work that out But yeah, I haven't even looked at the camera to see how flickery it is. Let's have a quick look. Oh, is that you're lucky? You're lucky you're not having an epileptic fit. I should have a warning about this because uh, all that was iffy that was. So yeah, this is another case of uh, your mate's got a C64. mate's got a C64 and uh, you like Supercycle on uh, his C64 so you bike for your Amstrad and you're very happy it's not really any different in terms of like the multi-load and the game plays absolutely fine the graphics are, are nice 
and when you're going at full pelt, which on uh, easy you can do quite often, that's fine. Uh, we can end up fucking long playing this shit. Well, it's my channel. If I want to play all levels, that's up to me, mate. We played some horrendous games, so uh, yeah, I think if I want to play all of Super Cycle and even make another coffee half the way through and stop the camera, that's up to me, mate. None of the cats sit on the fucking laptop keyboard. Now I need to uh, sort out some speakers for this hi-fi. However, I'm a bit worried that the speakers may be too close to the monitor and they may fuck up the uh, you know, the magnets for um, you know the electron gun. I don't care about the flags. Actually, I don't think we've had a bonus level yet. What is that noise? I'm sure on the C64 this bit, there's no actual other riders. I'm no, I'm 90% sure. Could be wrong. Hey! Bang on in it. Is there a cat under here playing with a fucking knife? It's really annoying. Wow, he's got dirt. Uh, Silver Dream Machine, which I haven't seen for a very long time. David Essex movie. I've a dream, Silver Dream Machine. That is really bugging me, I can hear something tapping. What is that fucking word? Fucking make this level completely. Very weird. Really off putting now. Enough already with the other riders in my way. Get the fuck out of my way, assholes. We've had uh, a few crashes now. There shouldn't be any fucking. Uh, bikes on this level. It's a bonus level, that's why the flags are there. Thank fuck for that right. What is making that fucking noise? Of course the noise is not happening now. Is it the monitor? Is it the uh, ship build quality here, the 1084D? It could be as long as I don't know what it is. Amy, is that you? You've been making it do that noise. I need to know if I can really fuck it when I can't play games for it. Seems to have stopped. Yeah, that must be it. Oh shit, shit. I need to make it to the uh, the thunderstorm level. I hope they got that. Actually, you've probably seen enough of this game, so. You change gear when the needle slows down how fast it goes up. Just so you know. These are not bonus uh, cones. These are not like after party cones that end up in the back of your car. Ah, to be fair, if you're actually paying attention, it's, it's not actually that bad in terms of like crashing. Yeah, so I think we can say uh, Super Cycle is uh, a win.
your mate got it on the C64, you had a go of it, you went in W.H. Smith, you bought Super Cycle for your Amstrad, you're happy! You didn't have to buy a C64, well I wouldn't buy a C64 just to play in the Super Cycle. And let's be honest, I didn't pay £99.99 for uh, an Atari 800XL to play Rescue on Fractalus on the Atari, so I certainly wouldn't be paying like, you know, 250 quid to get an Amstrad and a TV modulator. That's, that's not a, a slur on the Amstrad, that's just... Uh, well, anyway, you've seen enough. Next. Look how fast this loading screen is loading in. Elite, take note. So it's a nice loading screen except for the uh, yellow and pukey green uh, face of your warrior. It looks a bit like that actress who played uh, the devil in... Uh, uh, what was that thing called with P Patricia Hodge? Something, something she-devil. Anyway... Right, continue when it's loaded. What happened to Trantor, the last warrior, or whatever the fuck it's called? Well, yeah, that's what happened, mate. It didn't fucking work, did it? Asshole! And, uh, what kind of multi load is that? Let's try that again. I wasn't quick enough on the old, uh, anyway. Nice scrolling. I think the music's different to the ST version. But the ST version is another one which has surprisingly good uh, horizontal scrolling, even though there's none in hardware. Although that is an 8 megahertz 68,000. I, I know you like the technical stuff on my channel, you love it. Good thing we pressed space on VLC then, isn't it really? Still more to load, fuck's sake. This is like an 11 minute fucking tape image. Right, back again soon probably. Well, this is how far we got so far. And uh, we've only done 7 minutes 39 seconds of the 11 minute uh, tape image. So I don't really know if this is uh, multi load or what. Did we really need that piece of shit? This is an infuriating fucking load of this is. Infuriating. Well, it's quite uh, an accomplished uh, bit of uh, Amstrad CPC coding, I think. Where's the rest of the fucking... There we go. Real pain in the arse loading this game. And uh, I did have uh, this game on the ST, actually, as an original. Uh, I was still uh, on the fence about piracy then. didn't actually actively seek out, you know, pen pals wanted to swap discs, etc. So... I mean, people didn't really swap tapes on the C64 because it's uh, it's actually quite difficult to copy uh, C64 tape games unless you've got a mono tape deck. Some stereo tape decks will do it, but it's a bit hit and miss. You really need a mono tape deck, really a cassette doubler, and uh, yeah, well. But you know, in the ST and Amiga days, there was definitely a lot of uh, adverts in uh, CompuMart. Uh, I don't think I can keep the camera going for fucking another two minutes with a blank screen like this. Ah, oh, bloody hell, it's completely out of focus. I haven't even moved the camera. So that's why... Oh, Dave Perry. So that's why it didn't load the infuriating loader. But look, look at the speed of it. Look at the size of all the uh, 
software sprites as well. I can't remember how you play this game though, but it's a brilliant game. I think you do something here. You have found something or other. That's a cross between Mission Impossible and Ball B double A L by Signosis Burger. So I found uh, a rustler's burger in the fridge, which is better than microwaving it. I oh, know I've run out of fuel. Oh shit! Right, okay, so you refuel there. Right, okay. Ooh, go down a little bit. That's a fantastic bit of uh, coding. So we've got a shield now, have we? I mean, look at the speed it goes at. Trantor on the C64, I don't think it's actually that amazing. It should be, fucking should be. Now we get different graphics now. Look. So yeah, if you like these kind of games, this is brilliant. Oh uh, no, we've run out of fuel again. So that's what I don't like about this game. I like the explosion. Uh, it reminds me of uh, Defender. That reminds me of I've got to play Guardian 2. So like all that effort for a game that I'm not very good at and uh, you don't get to play very long if you're me. But it is actually a really nice game. MiG29. I played this on the uh, C64. Not bad as a budget version of uh, First Strike. First Strike doesn't exist for the Amstrad. Oh dear, what happened here then? Okay, they've gone for a more of an afterburner type thing. So up and down is reversed actually. So to go up on the screen. Yeah, it's not quite as impressive as on the C64. <coughs> But it's a budget game, so you've got to remember that. Yeah, see the old uh, up and down being reversed doesn't help. And these people never played any kind of arcade flight simulator. Let alone a proper... Ah, fuck it, I couldn't even see anything. Come on, mate. It's a disaster. The music's alright, it might sound better if it was played on the hi fi, I don't know actually. But on this shit speaker, you'll forget it. Man. run out of uh, ammo very quickly actually. How do I change to something else? Here? Nah, space and enter, that's too fucking obvious isn't it mate? Mm. It would help if I knew the keys to swap weapons. Not that you get that many. Ah come on, give me a chance. Yeah, I'm not liking this. I can't really recommend this game. The mediocre music is probably the best part of it. So. Just get on with it. Take a leaf out of Atari's book. I'll press fire. I should be playing a game two seconds later, mate. End of story. So why have I only got like ten fucking bullets? Next! Yeah, I can't really remember if Mega Apocalypse on the C64 had 
a loading screen. Obviously, I play shit off SD to IC. But uh, if you ever wondered what the uh, cover of the uh, cassette would look like on the BBC Micro, it looked like this, mate. What the hell's going on with this mode one? Fucking. Just leave mode one alone, mate. You sh that should only be for wireframe uh, game engines. Nothing else. Looks shit. And he looks like a fucking jester from Game of Thrones or some shit. Don't look like a space pilot to me. Now, if it was a BBC Micro, then I'd say, yeah, it's not bad. But this is Amstrad CPC with uh, 16 out of 27 unrestricted colour mode 1 mode. Hopefully the game will be better. JC Brook. Jason Brook, I guess. Uh, so this is his rendition of the uh, awesome hub art tune. It's okay, I suppose. It's a bit like the difference between a pound shop karaoke uh, version of uh, a tune you like. And they're going with mode one, you arsehole. What the fuck? Oh, it fires automatically, okay. So the speed is fine. Hey, hey it takes your uh, power-ups away when you uh, go to the next level, I guess. They can't hit you until they're larger. Yeah, it's a massive mistake because I can't tell which is a power-up and which is going to fucking kill me. Famously, Mad Commodore said, and that would be me, uh, it's better to go on the sides. I don't know if you can have a two-player simultaneous game with this. That's the thing. That's the best thing about this game. Other than that, it's uh, still right. Yeah, because the, it hasn't got the speed to make the uh, planets go, uh, you know, mental and whiz about the screen and kill you instantly because of the slowdown. Yeah, there's no point having this game because it's like a heavily watered down version of a very shallow game. And it might not even be two players on the I doubt it is because it's having a few slowdowns. If you look at the Starfield, the Starfield is getting affected. So. When the planets are trying to move really fast. And it's not a particularly playable game. I, I prefer Crazy Planets if I'm honest. So I remember I used to play Mega Apocalypse as a two-player simultaneous game with my cousin and my friends, obviously. <clears throat> so, you know, if you take that away and you take away the uh, speech and the 16-colour uh, graphics for the C64 version and the, uh, you know, the constant speed, it's not really worth playing anymore. Oh, bloody hell. Another cheesy feat to the face, spectacular international karate, and another mode one loading screen. Let's hope the arseholes realised that this was a mistake and they should be using mode zero. Use mode zero, you cunt! I think that's mode one. I think that's mode what with fuck. Again with a keyboard first. What's that mean, Amstrad? Oh right, the computer is playing right, I'll get you. <sighs> right, so you go and visit your mate uh, Peter with his Atari 800, you play International Karate, you think this is good. Then you go and visit Osiris, you play International Karate on your C64, you think wow, this is still really good. You go and buy it on your Amstrad and you think, motherfucker. 
There is never a good time for a game like this to be in mode 1. Never. The fucking is the same reason ST games were all low resolution, not medium resolution. And when it mattered, they were still low resolution. And it's a bit annoying to fucking play as well. And the graphics are shit. And the sound is nothing special. Yeah, the Commodore Plus 4 only version of uh, Way of the Exploding Fist is better than this shit. Black Karate Lives Matter? No, that's just diminishing the uh, message. Sorry. It's terrible. Bloody hell, fuck off with it, mate. I don't even want to play this game. It's so fucking... It's the embarrassment to the uh, CPC. Is there no decent Mode Zero fighting game on? Right, IK Plus it is, which I believe was only released in Spain on tape. Fucking miracles in uh, Mode Zero, which is correct. That is the uh, speaker at full volume, actually. Yeah, it plays fine, actually. White wins, obviously, because I'm playing white. See if we can get to the uh, bonus stage. Now you could argue the music's not as good as a 64, but if you had a 64C, the music sounds fucked up on this game anyway. Do I get to the bonus stage? Oh yeah. Ah oh, no, they're too slow. With the challenge, so it's like bullet time. The challenge is to stay awake waiting for them to hit your bloody thing. Imagine if Atari games had response times like this. Ah, oh, this is, how can it be so slow? Okay, well, this is just a bonus stage, so it's not really part of the uh, game as such, is it? If your mate says, oh, I'll get perfect score on the Amstrad one on the bonus day, he's like, yeah, well, done me shit, mate. Like I said. But, it's only a bonus stage. The game plays fine, and that's what counts. So, yeah, I think you'd be happy with this. Played this on your mate's ST, C64, whatever. I won't buy it for the meter. I expect a perfect conversion of fucking Street Fighter. Mega Drive quality, mate. I don't mean the uh, shit second release. I mean uh, championship edition. White is out! What the hell? Anyway. That's uh, definitely one worth playing on the Amstrad, so uh, that's another win. At least you can play a fighting game now, ain't it? What the hell is going on with his eyes there? But, this is uh, Paris Dakar, made in Spain apparently, and uh, it's a loading screen. It's neither shit, nor amazing. It just is. Cheeky bastards have shrunk the screen. Look, look, look what happened. He's not China Minor, bloody good thing at all. It's a shit game. Uh, I don't know what any of these mean. Uh, come on, uh, yeah, whatever. Da, da, da. Oh no. See, I can't get this stupid thing to start playing from like number 11. Mm.
Why the hell do I fucking download this shit? One and a half frames per second. What can you do, mate? This shit. The good thing the battery's about to go. I think this is uh, fucking practice, but uh, you need to practice your programming a bit now. This is horrible. The fucking mode one, the fucking one or two frames per second, bollocks, this shit. I wouldn't wipe my ass with this bullshit, mate. And what's going on with those wheels? They look like they're fucking broken already. They're fucking rubbish, then. Shit. Absolute cock. Again, why are we using mode one? Mode one is for fucking word processors and games like Star Wars, which don't even use mode one for some dumb reason. But anyway. Fucking shit, I think I'm going the wrong way anyway. It's got the car's got the handling of a fucking Ford Capri in a monsoon. And you have to uh, compensate for that tail slide at fucking one frame per second. Fuck off! This shit. It's a shit stain on the answer. A shit stain. Please, come on battery, run out. Come. So, personally, I think I have pretty much decided what the uh, number one game on any Amstrad top 10, top 5, whatever, top 1 million, yeah that's not possible, but you know what I mean. Uh, I'm going to say it's uh, this game, Ikari Warriors. I really think this is this is the sort of thing where if you saw this game and you compared it to other 8-bit computer versions including the uh, ship version from America for the uh, C64 then uh, this really is the best now like most 8-bit games you're talking about a compromise really it's always going to be a compromise. 8 bit computers, uh, they do not have arcade quality motherboards and consoles as well. Certainly not the kind of hardware that runs this in the arcade anyway. And uh, I actually prefer the graphics on this to the uh, NES version. Uh, you can't shoot through the bloody things. That's annoying, that is. Stop trying to bomb me, you bastard. Just let me get the power ups in you. There you go. So you can scroll back a little bit. So, yeah, this is the sort of game where uh, you would spend hours and hours trying to do better and better at it certainly get further than I've ever gone on any video so far but, uh, I did get a bit further uh, after I turned the camera off one time oh that 
as close as that is. Oh, they just respawn and respawn. That's just rude, days. That mine actually stops my bullets hitting them, I think. Yeah, yeah. You have to make it to the tank without losing a single life. If you don't do that, then it's buckwheats for you, mate. I was holding a fire button to fire a bloody uh, grenade. Come on, mate. Mutually assured destruction. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, there's a tank. Good, good. Straight in the tank. Thank you. Good. Safety first. Take out the turrets from the side if you can. This is definitely a system seller, as far as 8-bit machines go. And it certainly doesn't hurt the old CPC that the... Uh, you know, the Atari ST and Amiga versions are so underwhelming. Especially when you consider how good Commando is. So... Wait! Got to be a bit careful there. You know, I like the way they pirouette when you kill them. Reminds me of that Madonna video. Ah, I can't remember. Our bedtime story, that's it, yeah. Have to be a bit careful with the uh, shrapnel. So yeah, I mean, once you've got the tank, it's brilliant. Excuse me, madam. Stop trying to kill me, you bastard. There's a spare tank, but I'm quite liking this one, thank you. Ooh, that was lucky, that was pure luck. Maybe the slowdown helps me a bit sometimes. Get me. They can't fire sideways. Ooh, 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 Sir Madam, Sir Madam. And just run them over a little bit. Innit? Gotta be careful, some of them have rocket launchers. Ah. Uh, definitely need uh, some fuel here. It would be good. Good, 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 good. Oh, bloody hell, this could be the furthest I've ever been on camera. Don't tell me the uh, thing can't go any further. Ah, oh, no, this is a bit of a bastard. Ah, oh, no. It didn't really matter. I was going to bloody get killed anyway from the uh, tank. Ah, oh, no, I feel naked now. Naked warriors. So I wouldn't mind uh, being able to type in some pokes from, uh, I don't know, Amstrad Action or something. Uh, to actually, uh, you know, play a bit further in the game. But in a way, might actually ruin the game for me. So I'll be honest there. It could be like Manic Minor Rules apply, I reckon. Just waiting for the laptop to power up. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, Commando on the ST is really good. And so is Ghosts and Goblins, that's even more impressive for technical reasons. But, uh, Ikari Warriors on the Amiga is a fucking sh it's a budget game at best. And uh, on the ST it's not really... It's not that impressive, certainly not up to the uh, Commando conversion standards. There we go. 
This is XP. Imagine how long it would take me if I wasn't using an XP laptop as a donor machine. Yes. We've got a... Uh, we've got a laptop that's subservient to the 8-bit uh, computer. And that's correct. Windows is shit. Right. Let's try your country, I guess. We go play. So you can say what you want about the old uh, CPC, and um, there is there is no innovation. It's like here's some 16 kilobytes of address space to use for your, you know, 16 color. 160 by 200 uh, resolution screens is a Z80 with 4 megahertz. There is no innovation going on there at all. And uh, people go on and on about something called the CRTC chip. Let me tell you something, mate. The 1977 Commodore PET had a CRTC chip. It actually doesn't mean anything. It actually stands for cathode ray tube controller. It's, it's not like, you know, the antic chip on the Atari 400, which has a display list processor where you write little bits of code that are executed automatically. And it's not like the uh, parallel 4 bit memory access along with the 8 bit memory access that the CPU has. Uh, with the uh, VIC-2 chip in the C64 or you know the uh, the use of what we call color RAM and spectrum owners call attribute RAM to actually reduce the size of the memory you need to get a 16 color you know image on screen in any resolution that the C64 offers and the spectrum's only resolution right? none of that really matters as long as games like Ikari Warriors kept coming out, there's no reason not to buy an Amstrad CPC. If that was your budget, and you like the kind of games on a certain machine, then you buy that machine. I think Attack of the Mutant Camels, you know where I'm going with this, Star Raiders 2, and Rescue on Fractalus, you want an Atari 800 or 800XL for those games. But... I think on balance, with 130 odd games, originals that I had, and uh, ah, about 10, maybe 15 copies, I really, no, it's, it's probably closer to 10, much closer. I think the C64 was the right machine for the kind of games I wanted to play. But, uh, you know, my mate, he loved sorcery. Oh, someone keeps parking in front of the driveway there. Oh, she's not here. Very stylish, riding a bicycle. So, you know, people think, you know, all mad Commodore with a name like that, you've got to be a bloody Commodore fanboy. No, 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 no. Mad Commodore, the Mad Commodore, is the name of the character in the television adverts, and don't bother looking for it on YouTube because it don't exist. No one. Maybe it exists on like a one hour video of like 1983-84 adverts, you know, recorded on a VHS tape. You do get videos like that on YouTube and I haven't found one yet and I, I've given up looking now. It's, it's not really my job, I'm not an Atari fanboy. But that was the Atari 800XL advert and it was like... There was like, it's a bit like the old PC versus Mac characters where they sort of um, personified the uh, companies and, you know, Commodore had the Commodore and he was mad, apparently, because the uh, Atari 800XL was only £99.99 or £129.99 at the time of the adverts, whereas the C64 was, I think, about 250 quid at that time. Maybe even 280 quid. It's a UK advert. I know it's a UK advert because I saw it on the TV. And I've never seen it anywhere else. No one has found it. 
I asked on the Atari forums, which I, uh, I know is going on there now, I really do, I don't get on with the Atari community, really. They are very, very obtuse people to get on with, for different reasons, but still. So, you know, but yeah, I think, I think Ikari Warriors is basically, if, if you're like showing someone a computer, well, more than one actually, and uh, you know, you're trying to show them what the machine's capable of and what kind of games you could get, then uh, I think that would be a good one to show for the CPC. Let me guess, there was a joystick uh, option I had to set. <coughs> no, I really loathe this game on the uh, C64, I think it's absolutely shit. But uh, I do believe my mate had this on his Amstrad, so we have to play it. I, I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't buy it. One, my mate already had it, and two, it was no way of the exploding fist. And that might be the reason why I bought it. No, actually, he had the really exploding fist anyway. Or did he? Actually, I'm not sure about that. I know he saw it in the shop with me for the first time. We were in video wheels, and he uh, was like, Wow! This looks great! And uh, we asked the guy who owned Video Wheels to load it up, and he did, and, uh, you know, we heard the uh, Bruce Lee screech. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing I can do, unless escape. No, that's pause. That's not pause. Well, okay, so I've managed to get rid of the music, which is uh, neither good nor bad. I actually want to try playing the game. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, we we loaded it up, we heard the screech, we heard the music, we were blown away by the game, really, it was like, and I bought it straight away, and I think it was only nine quid or something. This is one time I wish you only had one bloody life on this game. I come on you fat shit, just take him out. Always with a bloody numeric keypad. There it goes, so that's the fire button, is it? So you only got one fire button. I don't want to play it on keys anyway. Come on, take me out, you little shit. Good, 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 good. So yeah, that is an annoying thing about Amstrad games. You know, at least half of them seem to default to keyboard player only. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Just, ah, oh, fuck off. I didn't even want to play this game, now I've got to wait for this, sh this little fat shit to fucking take me out. The characters may actually be bigger on the Amstrad version than the C64, I'm not sure. Good, good. So yeah, I, I don't like this business. Uh, why have I got to redefine the keys, mate? There's a fucking joystick port built into the computer, it's not a fucking 48k Spectrum. Oh no, I've just done that wrong. Oh, fucking. oh no, look, press fire for joystick, let's do that again. Really? See, it's a really dumb thing. On the main menu, it doesn't even say joystick. You have to go into redefine keys, press fire for joystick, and that will be set as joystick, and that's just wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Anyway, let's get on with the uh, review. So, uh, This is more Jackie Chan than uh, Bruce Lee. That's how I describe the difference between this and where the exploding fist on the C64. There's a lot of acrobatics going on. And luckily IK Plus on the Amstrad Fucking move out of the way, will you? 
fucking jump up or do something. He trapped him there, that's just rude that is. Yeah, luckily IK Plus, only the bonus level has slowed down. Yeah. The actual game is uh, not too bad. No off, mate. Just fuck off, innit? I want to see some different graphics. Your graphics offend me. And why don't I get one of them? Fuck's sake. I don't know if that's a uh, male or female. I was going to say you little bitch, but I suppose you can... Uh, do that's a bit of a ramp up in difficulty, innit? Straight away. It doesn't help I've got the, uh, the crap gypsy. Yeah, Richard Hammond start blaming the joystick, innit? Matrix style ridiculous, I have to admit. I think this game is better on the Amstrad, actually, than the C64. But, I would have had uh, Exploding Fist already. And for some reason I bought International Karate for the C64, which came out after Exploding Fist. Because uh, apparently, ah, it won't let me jump. They do it again, man. You can get cornered. I don't like that bullshit. I'm trying to do the same move using the same joystick thing, and it doesn't do it all the time. That's a bit annoying. Ooh, the flukiness of Mad Commodore prevails. So at least you only have to knock, take them out once. Uh, if you want a different background, I think you've got to load the other version. Now, maybe one of the reasons why I don't like this game is because you don't get any weapons. And you can't do any fireballs like Street Fighter 2 or anything. And yet they have weapons. So we've had Ninja Stars, now we've got Nunchucks. Yeah, no, there's no purity going on. So I definitely like fighting games because I had Exploding Fist and then I bought International Karate. Uh... I, think, I don't know if Exploding Fist is mode 1 as well, but International Karate is mode 1. Luckily, IK Plus does exist for the uh, CPC, so if you want that, I'd say that is the best fighting game. Uh, but as a gamer myself, I prefer Ikari Warriors uh, to... Um, you know, your Kung Fu, or even IK Plus, or Exploded Fist. There's just more longevity there, going on. Oolong Penis. What's your name, Oolong? Oolong Penis. Whoosh. I don't think there's any time on this either, so you, you can't do the thing that you do with like other fighting games. Where basically you can be ahead in the uh, you know in the energy bar state and uh, and then just avoid them for the last ten seconds and you'll win. You can't even do that. I can't see any kind of bonus or score or. Button mashing don't really work on this. But you've got to see at least three opponents. So, you know, you can't complain about the video. You're probably going to complain about the video quality, but I've already explained it. There's absolutely nothing I can do about that. 
The uh, Amstrad CPC monitor only has one dial that controls uh, contrast and brightness and you cannot change the saturation. So, So there's nothing I can really do to help the camera. If the camera doesn't like it, what's being shown on the screen, then, well, you fucked, really. So anyway, that was that, and, uh, yeah, on to the next one. And you can add the uh, Turrican 2 tape image to uh, the list of ones created by fucking knobs. And they are created by knobs because uh, they should be useful for people using real hardware first. People using real hardware are superior to those who are not interested in using emulator files with real hardware compared to an emulator. Emulators come second mate. So we've already had one failed attempt, I was waiting there for ages and then I went through a piss and I come back and there's some music playing and I thought nah that kind of loaded already, there's loads more uh, to load in and of course one of those stupid loaders where the fucking thing just stops and then uh, starts playing some music but obviously the, the virtual tape is still going bollocks mate they fucking uh, rip these things properly put a fucking split in the file cunt you chicken box prick so we have to load it again and press pause Yeah, never mind all that, mate. Fucking the music's not that good. Maybe it sounds better if it was connected to some half decent speakers instead of some chicken box prick tiny little fucking one centimetre speaker. Anyway, uh, yeah, I keep forgetting to uh, see if I can uh, find out more info on the. Um, you know, the, the original CPC prototype, which had a 6502 CPU. I need to check that out anyway. A fucking uh, aggressive fucking uh, low rent prick who ran Amstrad at the time. He, uh, he got a bit frustrated and he cancelled that project. And he, he found a couple of students to cobble together something else for him quicker. I really don't know what the problem was with the original 6502 base CPC on Anyway, that's not the point. So I, this really is a VIC-20 size screen. The screen I'm seeing there is about fucking 8 inches on the 14 inch monitor. That's bullshit. It's actually, uh, it's a curse that you can set the size of the uh, screen, well, borders and therefore make the screen smaller on the uh, on the CPC. It's a curse, mate, because uh, if that wasn't the case, then scrolling a smaller screen wouldn't actually be faster. Well, not as fast as it is by doing it this way. Um, you'd have to be do a bit more jiggery pokery with your uh, maths when you're uh, you know moving bits around and bytes. So there was no loading screen or nothing. And I've got to sit here like a chicken box prick just in case I have to pause the tape again. Even though the tape is split over two sides, which I thought, oh, well, that's obvious then. One side loads the program and then you've got to turn the tape over and press the fire button. And I thought I could go for a piss, but no, sir. Yeah. So I'm running a season two of uh, Game of Thrones at the moment, and uh, it's going to take fucking ages. I think it's time to turn the camera off again. This is one terrible fucking loader, I tell you, mate. At least it's gone in focus. Right, there we go. Now I chose this game, Turrican 2, because it seems to scroll a bit better than Turrican 1. Yay! Uh, and it is actually uh, surprisingly good to scroll. It seems to be doing a four pixel uh, scroll, but it doesn't really matter, it's fast enough. And uh, you only worry about that and slow down on games like this. Why can't I jump up there, innit? 
I don't actually like Turrican on the Amiga. I think it looks like a, a cleverly programmed ST game. Because of all the uh, plain background bullshit. It's a shit game. Oh no! Okay, it's not like Rasta and Saga where you can actually uh, go down them bits. But, uh, can we go over this bit? Uh, but Turrican 3 is amazing on the Amiga. And uh, it's standard fodder for the Mega Drive, obviously. But this is really good uh, for a CPC game, actually. Except it's bloody difficult. Bloody difficult, sir, madam. Now, if he tells me to rewind the tape, that's, uh, that's this game over with. Right, we've got one life left and that I can work out without my CRT glasses. So yeah, I mean, this is surprisingly good. I didn't know Rainbow Arts uh, knew how to program the CPC. Nah, that's a bit fucking annoying, isn't it? Ah, uh, no, not again. Like, at least we're not losing any lives fucking about. I don't think you can go any further than that, so maybe we have to like go up there somehow. Can we make that sort of jump? Yeah we can. How the fuck was I even up in the air like that? It don't make any sense. So I'm already stuck, so it don't really matter. Oh there we go, we can go on that bit. And then that bit, and then that bit, and then that bit. Always like Avatar, you know, when they got the uh, things in the sky. Ah, oh, fuck it, how am I supposed to judge that? And then you fall down there. What a cunt. How am I supposed to do down in there? Is this the way? Or is it a shortcut? So yeah, I mean, this is really good for the Amstrad. If you like these kind of games, you definitely got to have this game on the Amstrad. Go to start of tape. I don't want to go to so start tape. What do you mean go to start of tape? Where was the start? It didn't actually tell me to reset the tape counter and stop. Ah! Why have they put it as uh, two completely separate sides then? Because you've got Turrican 2, side A, and side B as two separate tape images. And if there is a difference in the loader, it will say like fast load or normal load. In there. Yeah, that's the end of that one. But that is a good game. But you really need to be playing that on a uh, disc based system. So you're a bit fucked if you've got 464 like me. Another bastard loader that just stops for no reason to play some rubbish music. Yeah, it seems to be a thing on the Amstrad for some reason. Fucking annoying, I tell you, mate. Well, you've got to hear the rubbish music, whoever did that. Uh, MW, certainly not. BMW, more like bowel movement. BM only with no W. Well, I might as well uh, mention uh, me memories of this game. I had uh, Turbo Cup by Laurie Seals for my Atari ST. They did release a version that came with like a, a 118th scale die-cast model of, uh, I believe it was a 944, a Porsche 944. Uh, I didn't have that version, that may have been on the Amiga only as well, uh, I'm not sure if I'm honest. There didn't seem much more left to fucking load, hurry up and get on the next chapter you piece of shit. So, uh, and uh, it wasn't great, it wasn't great at all, but uh, I might as well leave the camera going. But I did have that game, and I did play it as an early game on the ST, relatively early. So I, th I think they uh, converted it back from the uh, ST to other things. I think the original version was for the ST. 
says I would have had an Amiga by October 1988. There's no way I didn't have an Amiga by October 1988. No way at all, mate. I got my Amiga before I started working in a chip shop. Yeah, I'm not proud, brother, in it. I don't really care. And uh, I did make some of the best fish and chips in East London and something to be proud of. Although the kind of uh, women that are addicted to fish and chips, they're not really the kind that I would fancy, anyway. And that's not even talking about the, uh, you know, the spotty face. But it was nice to get complimented on uh, such brilliant uh, fish and chips, which I learned to make myself better than the previous owner, who was English. Just, just so you know. Yeah, there are just as many, oh actually I can't tell you the rest of that story, so uh, lukewarm uh, coffee, I'm rationing the uh, cola because I can't go to the shops today or tomorrow because the day after I'm going around my parents and because of the bank holiday I wasn't sure what time the shops closed yesterday. So I didn't actually go because the car sounds a bit lumpy. Definitely needs a full service that car. And I definitely need to find a way to get it serviced without them giving me COVID. And uh, anyone who says to me in person COVID is just a flu, I'm going to fucking smack them so hard their fucking head will cave in. You know, it's one thing having the IQ of a fucking potato, it's another one fucking killing me because you've got the IQ of a potato and you fucking believe any shit you fucking hear from some other dumb cunt with the IQ of a boiled potato. But anyway, this is nearly done, so uh, there's no point turning the camera off. I have been trying to turn the camera off when, you know, it's shit like this. There's no fancy loader or anything. I'd rather just have a, a loading screen instead of something that stops and starts playing some music and then, nah, I don't like that shit. And that's nothing to do with uh, using, uh, you know, tape image files and a cassette adapter, you know, inside the real hardware. Even back then I wouldn't have liked that. See, you put the game on to load, you go and do something like make a sandwich. Here we go. Now hurry up already, mate. Hang on, mate. Let's uh, zoom that up a bit. So the frame rate is actually about the same as the ST version, and the handling, well, maybe it's a little bit less, but not much. And the handling is just a shit, it's like rear wheel steering, it's very weird. It's the kind of shit we have to put up with, even though we'd be playing uh, perfectly playable uh, games on 8-bit systems earlier, like Pit Stop 2 on the C64. And I am specifically talking about the ST here. It is what it is, it kind of looks the same. And like I say, it's the same terrible handling. never had a Porsche of any type so I couldn't tell if this is how bad the handling is in 1988 for a Porsche 944 Lux Turbo. I did fancy getting one of them but yeah. Am I qualifying now? Because there's no other cars on the track. It's what it is really. I know my cat's going to win it. My cat's going to want to go on the laptop, I was going to say. I'm not really in a position to uh, reach out and close the lid on the laptop at the moment. So this isn't even a multi-load, so for unattended loading, it's another one where I have to split the fucking file into two halves. And Turrican is hugely annoying because it doesn't even tell you that you're supposed to reset the tape. It actually says uh, start the tape again. 
But even though I lost all my life on that level, so obviously it wants you to rewind it. But rewind it to where? It's, uh, it's not brilliant. It's about as shit as Road Blasters on the C64 or other badly written games. Maybe Outrun. Uh, ah, the Crazy Cars game. Yeah, it's as shit as Crazy Cars 1 and 2 and all that shit on the uh, 8th. I don't know if Crazy Cars 3 came out for the CPC. It did come out for the C64. There's nothing special though. Graphically, it's quite shit looking. Maybe it moves uh, okay, but who cares, mate? This is qualification, it's taking ages. I just want to see how much slow game we get when there's other cars on the track. I'm doing 230 kilometers an hour now. Well, this has got to be the end. Come on, mate. Start from. Yeah, that's not me. It just does that when you uh, do that. Yeah, the other cars are all yellow. Yeah, it's kind of like the ST version. Not enough sound channels, mate. So obviously everyone goes fast in Oh, I wasn't last in the qualifications. I am now though, probably. Alright, straight away I'm fucked. Ah, come on you piece of shit. I want to see how fucking difficult they are. Well, they must have like gone really slow then too. Yeah, this isn't a fucking white knuckle racing game for the CPC. And the frame rate is probably a third of the Chase HT, which looks better anyway. See, these strikes they're doing on the road, for some reason, a lot of Amstrad games don't have rasters for this sort of effect, so they're wasting CPU time updating the screen. So... I think it was the same on the ST, they weren't using rasters there either, so it looks as shit as rasters, but it's wasting CPU time, it's a real shit way of doing it. Yeah, this isn't going to get in my top 100 uh, CPC games, certainly not me. Oh, fucking great. Hurry up already, you really, mate. I don't think we've actually overtaken anyone, it's that bad. And I'm not talking about my gameplay, so... I haven't found all my Amiga discs yet, because I haven't found Highway Patrol 2, which I used to play on my Amiga 1000, when I lived in uh, Cyprus while I was working there. I uh, haven't found my backup copies of uh, It Came From The Desert, yeah, they're on three discs and uh, they're purple disc labels. It's like bullet time racing. Ah, bollocks. So of course nothing happens to them. Right, you've seen enough of this shit. Look at that fantastic loading screen. I don't know why people bother with mode one. It's really dumb thing to do for these kind of games but uh, yeah look at that that's really nice so uh, yeah let's wait for the rest of the game to work obviously it's a multi-load so uh, probably be loads of swearing soon well no swearing but uh, from now on multi-load games will be load, uh, loaded in via VLC or something like that and uh, the WAV file that uh, CDT to WAV create because you cannot rewind the tape to a certain section making it absolutely useless so one player game please start from a joystick who watches the watchman so this is cracked already but uh, 
Okay, so it's no music at all. It looks really nice. It is. It's a. Uh, it's a push scroll. So there's that. But other than that, that's the only negative I can find about the game. It is a bit weird the way it does that. See, look. But if you can, ah, uh, it does that on the C64. I should have remembered that. Oh, bloody hell! Stop killing me, innit, you bastard? If it's not bloody hidden mind, do not tell me to rewind the fucking tape. Right, good, good. Yeah, fuck the bridge, mate. Hey, someone, this, nah, nah, I'll go through the water, thank you. Alright, well, at least it doesn't force you to, uh... Okay, so we're over the bridge and we've lost less life, so that's good. It's a fiendishly difficult game to play without your reading glasses on. Yes. Ah, come on, mate. Looks really nice. Uh, if I liked uh, Contra as much as uh, Ikari Warrior style games, or if it had uh, even a chunky 4 pixel scroll routine, uh, this might be closer to uh, Ikari Warriors for me, for me personally. Uh, see, that's difficult to tell. It's so colourful, but they didn't like do different colours. Ah, come on, I'm not very good at this game. Some sort of power up in here. Let me start a power up. Give me that power up, buddy. Oh shit, I can't get up there to get the power up. Man. Yeah, see, cause I don't know if you can scroll backwards. I bet you can't. Now, nah, see, so I've lost the power up just because uh, it stayed up there. So, as an arcade game, I prefer Ikari Warriors. So, there's that problem. And the push scroll is a bit off putting. But if you really liked uh, Grizzle or Contra, uh, I think you'd uh, like this on the Amstrad, actually. I don't think you could really complain. Ah, oh, come on. Can you even blow them things up? Yeah, you can. Hang on, can I not jump back up? Why can't I jump back up? No music, but you know, do you really care that there's no music? Did I get a little bit further that time? Maybe one push scroll further, so uh, that's uh, about as much as you're going to see from me. But that's really good. If you uh, if you really like Contra in the arcade, I think you'd be happy with that with uh, the Amstrad version. Uh, uh, actually, Spacebar I think did something on the C64 version, which is why I didn't like it. But I, don't, I don't understand what's different. They've made good use of the uh, three shades of turquoise because there's only one shade of grey. It looks fine actually. Now when you get down here you're a bit fucked if I'm honest. Ah, see, yeah, you're kind of caught in the crossfire. But I'm just going to keep jumping over every part. Ah, come on. Let me get a bit further this time. Wow, we definitely got further. Ah, come on, man. Ah, uh, here it goes. <laughs> so, uh, I think for other people, it should really be a contender for, uh, you know, the, the best game on the Amstrad. But... Um, 
Possibly uh, Sly Spy might be better for me, but that's a horrendous multi-load up bit. But anyway, that's a Grizzle Stroke Contra. This does appear to be a full screen uh, Amstrad game. This is Guardian 2, because Defend or Die, which technically would be Guardian 1 by Alligator, uh, needed uh, some sort of thing typed in from the manual. This is lovely. Except uh, I'm not very good at Defender. But other than that, it's lovely. <laughs> oh, and it's based on uh, Stargate, and I, I prefer. Um... Oh, no, that wasn't good. Hey, I'll shoot them then. What's going on there? Okay, maybe the collision detection is a bit funny. We'll, uh... I have to keep an eye on that. Okay, it's another good one for the uh, CPC. If you actually like Defender, then uh, you'd be crazy not to have this game. Possibly Defender will die. Why can't I shoot them? Ah, oh, I can shoot them. Very nice scrolling routine. No! Okay. We actually did it in a tough way. So I think the only thing I would say is you really need your CPC connected up to a decent set of speakers for this game. Hey, what? You know it's me. Who else says chicken box freak? No one else says that, mate. Only I say that. That's my thing now. Okay. So I had Guardian, not Guardian 2, on the uh, C64. Alligator Clamshell, full price, $7.99, $8.99, I can't remember. Uh, I used to play that a lot. So, yeah, this is just as good, really. I'm going to have to... Uh, See if I can get the manual for Defend or Die to see if it's uh, better because I prefer Defender to Stargate. It's just a slightly easier game and uh, it's already ridiculously difficult for me. But uh, controller response is absolutely fine. He says whilst crashing into a uh, bloody mutant. No, they're not mutants, they're landers. Things were worse that time, I think. We did. Let's have one more go. Ah, come on. God damn it. Oh, hang on, I haven't even used the smart bombs yet. The smart bomb sound on the uh, Defender the Arcade is brilliant. I love that sound. Let's see if we can bloody rescue someone. Okay, we rescued someone and then we died. It was a sacrifice. It was a selfless sacrifice by a mad comedy. Yeah, that is brilliant. I have to say, that's, uh, that's another win. Uh, that's another box checked, I should say, for the uh, Amstrad. Because, uh, you know, when you bought one in 1984, there's certain games you wanted. You wanted... Uh, you know, the, the usual arcade games. And the CPC was actually, personally, I'd say it's more of a rival to the BBC Micro than the C64. You can moan all you want about that, but that's about how it is. Fast CPU, uh, standard uh, bitmap screen, and uh, yeah, colourful 
160 by 200 mate. Although the BBC Micro only has eight shitting colours. Don't know if you can read that. So hopefully uh, we're going to be checking out Ghouls and Ghosts now. Now if uh, the tunes are like the Atari ST tunes that I remember on the Amstrad then uh, really should be connected to a hi-fi. Do you have the uh, cable for that somewhere? I don't know where I put it though. I do remember wrapping it up. Crap, that's, uh, that's not good. Yeah, where is the uh, cable? Not there, not there. Ah, uh, here it is, yes, ready. But we also have the other one, so there's two ways of doing it. I can either uh, use the uh, microphone pull. We're going to get a loading screen, so we wait for this to load up. And it's loading up fast, much faster than Ikari Warriors uh, loading screen, which takes about four minutes to load. It's ridiculously slow. This can be done in about 40 seconds. Mode uh, zero, that's a, that's a win. I don't know if the uh, C64 version has a loading screen. I haven't really investigated, uh, you know, if, if I can do the same thing with a C64. Um, I'll have to have a think about that. Uh, but I'll have the same problems on multi-load games, you're going to have to like split them off manually because people like doing tape images. You know, they don't really do that. Conversion for US Gold Buy. Let's have a look. Software creation, is that? It is software creations, right? You've seen enough, so it's quite nice. But I would have preferred uh, something a bit more, yeah. Anyway, but they've done what they've done is nice, but it's not really sort of like uh, cover art converted. I had to start that quickly because I'm losing lives. Oh, come on, mate. So there's no music. Oh, come on. I don't know what, how I feel about the graphics, they're not very good. And considering we're in a 16 colour mode, why are they chosen such a shit palette? The well, push scroll works well enough, I suppose. It's uh, a bit easier to uh, digest than the, uh, the one on Grizzle. I uh, know, all the way back here. I suspect Ghouls and uh, Ghosts is a shit game to have as a, a home computer game unless there's some radical changes to the uh, design of the arcade game which is nothing more than a coin swallowing piece of shit I don't mean the game's a piece of shit I mean it's just designed to swallow your fucking coins it's not designed as a great game so. but the controls are fine uh, some of the colour choices are a bit weird, I must admit. Ah, I just want to shoot up. Why can't I shoot up without jumping up like a prick? Yes. It better be unlimited continues, you cocksucker. Right, okay. I think, so, I think just like every other fucking uh, computer, uh, Ghosts and Goblins is better than Ghouls and Ghosts on the uh, home computers. Ah. Uh, I don't know about the uh, spectrum, but uh, see, I don't like the way he jumps up to uh, to fight up. That's a shit idea. That is. And why does it take so many hits to hit the little fucking birdie? So I can't get that cunt now, so that's a bit fucked. Fucking 
Ah, oh, right, it's that stupid fucking power up where it just fucking kills you. It's the fucking witch doctor. Yeah, I don't like ghouls and ghosts or ghouls and ghosts and goblins as a game. As a conversion quality, uh, if they hadn't fucked up with uh, ghosts and goblins and forgot the fact that you lose your armor first and then lose a life, it's a big cock up. Which I'm amazed no one has fucking bothered to fix. Uh, come on, mate. I suppose the collision detection is quite generous, if I'm honest. Yeah, I don't want that one to fuck off. Give me a real power up, you cunt. A real power up in you. Oh no, yeah, you see, you've got to go over them before they uh, slice your head off. Oh, actually, it's a Jubilee weekend, speaking of uh, how the French people dealt with the uh, problem of uh, royal families. Yeah, I don't want the shit weapon, please. Ah, uh, no, where did he get oh, off? Off. I've got to start all the way back here, right at the beginning, this is what I mean, it's a shit game to convert to a home system with no fucking modifications at all. To make this playable as a home game, it needs uh, a lot of fucking work, mate. And uh, the, there's something wrong with the graphics, I'm like... Why, why is a tree drawn like that with just one shade of orange? We're on a 16 colour fucking screen and you can have any 16 colours in any combination right next to each other if you want. There's no colour around, none of that bullshit going on. So the graphics are shit. So the graphics have been designed by a chicken box prick. So there's that. And uh, it's not suitable as a home game anyway. Which makes me laugh when people are like, uh, uh, got to spend £60 on super ghouls and ghosts on this thing. Uh, why? It doesn't work as a home game. It hasn't been uh, fixed. Not on, the, on any system. Not the Mega Drive, not the snares, not the fucking uh, PC engine, nothing. Mate. Ah, come on, mate. And this business where you pushed all the way back, it's a fucking bollocks, mate. Can I fucking shoot them? Do I just have to avoid them? What's going on here? The rain effect is actually not causing any slowdown, which uh, surprises me. And what am I supposed to do about that? They're fucking about on the foot, right. But as a conversion quality, uh, the graphic could have been better. The coding is not too bad and there's no music. So make of it what you will, but Ghouls and Ghosts is a shit game as a home computer game or home console. Imagine if you could have graphics like that on a Formula 1 game on the CPC. Imagine, sir. Anyway, that's the loading screen for uh, Grand Prix 3D or 3D Grand Prix. Right. This is a uh, 3D Grand Prix and I don't have to buy it. It's not really going that fast, but uh, I need a straight bit of track to overtake him actually. He's right there, you can't really see him. I hit something, don't know what. I will overtake something. So I got this for the BBC Micro in actual original cassette. But uh, luckily, see there's a problem with this game, you can't actually see them. While you're going around the corner, sort of thing. So I can't see where he is. So 
if I turn in now, I won't know if he's there. Ah, come on, mate. Yeah, when I'm going around the corners and I really need it to change down the gear, it won't. So, and of course, now that we're coming up to a sharp bend, see, I can't change down gear when I'm going around the corner. I don't know what's going on with that. I've got no problem doing it on the straights. I don't think it's a joystick, actually. It's uh, a fiendishly difficult game. This bastard won't get out of my fucking way. Move! Put that motherfucker. Maybe you've just got to be a bit aggressive, isn't it? So the graphics are quite nice and it's quite fast, but the cars are too fucking white. And you can't really see what the next bit on the track is. See look, when the car's skidding, when the car's skidding it won't actually let you change down the gear, which is annoying. And there's no automatic gearbox option, which I don't like. Plus I can hear someone fucking about with something outside. So you'll never rescue it, that's the thing. If you can't change down the gear. What the hell's going on out here? The fuck? Fucking Jubilee cocksuckers everywhere, mate. They're all making noise. I don't like all this uh, bank holiday together business. Fuck off. What cocksucker decided to have two bank holidays right next to each other? You're fucking annoying, mate. That's some prick playing uh, Free Lions, that shit tune with David Baddiel on it, and that other prick, Frank Skinner, is it? A fucking maximum volume in his garden. That's the fucking uh, dumb cunts with the uh, two acre garden who don't even deserve to be living in a council. They deserve to be dead, mate. They are scum. I've seen them people. They're disrespectful cocksuckers. We actually made a turn and then we crashed into it. So it's very difficult to overtake on this game. That's always a problem. But uh, maybe with a lot of practice, it might be all right. Ah, fuck off, man. He just fucking nipped in front of me. So, the, the graphics are nice and the speed is fine. I like the wheels as well. Look how slow they're going. How did he fucking overtake me? That's what I want to know. So, you've got to change gear before you fucking... Uh, all that bullshit with the uh, overtaking. Is he just fucking overtaking me, the cunt? No. Good. So it's slowing fast out, basically. I'm just going to keep it in fourth gear and uh, be very conservative. Ah, see, once a car's skidding, you can't brake. And I think they've uh, cocked up on the controls because you can't change down the gear, which is what you do. But I wonder if the uh, BBC Micro version would be faster. So we're still fucking 20th. Unbelievable, mate. I'm a fucking driving god on uh, driving games, and uh, so therefore there's something wrong with this game, obviously. The cars are too wide, and they stay right in the middle of the track. That's the problem. Look at that. Fuck you. Although he is obeying the uh, FIA rules, that one. Position 22, this is like the real era of Formula 1 when there was like 
26 cars on the track. Yeah, it's a game I'm going to have to spend ages uh, uh, practicing, actually. A bit like Ikari Warriors. Although this, I don't know if I'd put this in my top five. Although I haven't found a better racing game yet. Chase HQ isn't really a straight up racing game. It's more of a, a crash em up, if you know what I mean. They go really slow around the corners, that's what annoys me. So that's why it's very difficult to overtake the bastards. Now come on man, see they hog the fucking road, that's the problem with this game. You can change up really quickly and it won't really affect your acceleration too much. And if you stay in third gear, but at least it doesn't say uh, your wheels fell off and uh, all that shit like Super Monaco. And the frame rate is good enough. It's just a matter of, uh, I suppose, getting used to the difficulty. And you can't blow your engine like uh, revs. I don't really need that level of realism in my racing games, thank you. I've got a real car with engine problem. Well, it just needs a service, I think. So now that I've kind of got used to the handling, maybe another day we'll have another go at this. See, while you're skidding out, it won't let you change down. There's something weird about that. So, and once you're off the track, it's not like... We're in position 24th now. Get out of my way, you piece of shit. So you can, uh, you can run the car on the rev limit all the time. We're actually, we have technically overtaken someone. It's difficult to uh, tell how fast you're going because there's no actual speed. That's the other thing. So, but. I don't know if the uh, BBC Micro version has uh, like slightly skinnier cars, that would make a difference to the playability. But then the BBC Micro is £399.99. Famously, the uh, BBC Master 128 is a BBC Micro 128k RAM. Uh, cost more than the 520 STM. Absolutely ridiculous. It's a real shitstorm of a. Uh, and Acorn wonder why they weren't fucking outselling anyone. That's because no one could afford your 8 bit shit, mate, in uh, the mid 80s. Yeah, it's been that. Fourth and third gear seem to be quite close, but it's hard to tell because you don't actually have a speed on your screen. You just have like the dial there for the speed on me. Ah, that don't mean shit. It's not like there's any numbers on it. It's a real shame because uh, with a bit more effort, this could have been one of their best 8-bit racing games going. Simply because the game engine is fine. So you see, when I'm following them, they go around the corners really fast. When I'm trying to overtake them, they fucking, uh, they go around the corners really slow. So they obviously modelled the other drivers on uh, Ayrton Senna blocking manoeuvres, I guess. And again, you can't really overtake that often in Formula 1 anyway, so I suppose it is highly realistic, really. <laughs> it's no match for F1 on an Amiga, but yeah, well, if you couldn't afford an Amiga, well then that's a bit different. And actually, when this game came, I think it's a 1984 game, so for an early game, it's actually not bad. Uh, 
It looks better on micro live when Leslie Judd is playing it than when you actually get it home and you, have, you actually get a chance to play it yourself. I guess that's really what it comes down to, I guess. I think we spent too long on this, but it's just taking me too long. I don't know how many laps we can do, so... Yeah, we are at the maximum speed now. Course completed. Game over. So there's only one course as well, I guess. 